Microsoft seems to be on a roll right now. It seems to be doing a lot of stuff at the same time. It just released the Lumia Denim update for most of its Windows phones ranging from the Lumia 520. If you haven't checked out of the Lumia Denim on Lumia 1020 video yet, the link is over here. And it just announced its Windows 10 for most of its Windows phones. And we're already seeing Windows Phone 10 technical preview on most devices like the 1520, the 1020 and even the 1320. And more devices will be receiving the technical preview soon. So, I'm Abhishek for Wilson Chips and this is an extensive review about the Windows Phone 10 technical preview build one on the Lumia 1020. So, without any further ado, let's begin. The Windows 10 technical preview brings in a ton of new features to the Windows Phone devices. Starting with the start screen. Um, it's taking quite a while actually because this is the first build and naturally it's pretty unstable but it's fairly usable and surprisingly good as well. So this is the start screen and as you can see it differs from the earlier version wherein it lets you keep the background wallpaper which then fades away in between the tiles so that's pretty amazing. Initially you could only set wallpapers within the tiles and sometimes that seemed pretty ugly to be honest. This one looks pretty neat if you ask me and yes there are lags in the UI but that's a good news the apps do not lag. I'll show you the Facebook app that's pretty fast as well. Okay, Facebook beta. As you can see, the app loading times are very, very minimal and it's very fast. For build one, this is pretty good. And there are also new tile sizes for particular applications like the people. You can now have a vertical alignment and for people who wanted a vertical alignment, kudos. Okay, let me just set this back. And yes, you have those lovely live folders options as well. But the only factor that actually differentiates the normal tiles from the live folders is the fact that they're generally not always transparent and sometimes they use the actual app theme instead of the transparency themes. So that's the only difference, but they do, they do show you the live tile information as how a normal live tile would, even though they are inside a live folder. What do we have here? The notification tray is amazing. It's a new notification tray, which means that once you swipe out a message from here, the same is reflected in your Windows RT or your synchronized Windows PC as well. So that's pretty amazing. And there's an inline reply feature as well. Did you see what I did there? I just press on the down arrow mark and I get the ability to reply immediately. Wow, the message is completely gone. You also have the option to actually individually dismiss messages from the same app. For example, if the messenger had four or five messages from the same person, I could individually dismiss the messages. I'm sorry that I don't have enough notifications to show you that. And we have expandable toggles as well. This is one feature Windows Phone owners have been asking Microsoft for a long time because Android has had these features for a very, very long time. Okay, so that's out of the way. And yes, another change to the overall interface is the fact that you have your recently installed apps over here. And after that, you'll be able to witness your total list of apps. So that's pretty helpful if you want to fetch your recently installed apps as soon as possible. It's kind of like the Android shortcut to the home screen menu. And a couple of changes are present in the settings as well. This is the device encryption actually. Let me show you the initial setting screen. This is the initial setting screen. It's actually pretty organized if you'd ask me. The earlier one used to be very haphazardly set up so it was pretty difficult to find stuff. But this setting screen is gorgeous and this is a universal setting screen as well meaning that your Windows RT or Windows PC will be having a very similar setting screen so that you have a consistent experience. 
one. So you get a couple of new additions over here, for example, the Microsoft Office. The earlier provided Office for the Windows Phone was actually pretty basic, but the next build will actually be featuring a full Windows RT Office with extensive features built into the Windows Phone as well. And then we have the USB feature. This is pretty new. Ask me before using USB data connection or notify me when I connect to a slower charger. Both of these are extremely helpful. For example, I for one use different chargers and, and sometimes these kind of notifications actually help me in choosing a better charger. So kudos to Microsoft for that. Okay, you have the find my phone option and yes, you have the device encryption. Oops. This is a technical preview, so these kind of crashes, force closings, and bugs are to be expected. Device encryption. I hope it's readable now. Okay. What this does is it basically provides you a protection or an encryption so that you can only access the phone's contents on a PC by entering the password first. So that's a pretty neat feature. And you have the ability to optimize the Cortana and search features as well. And another interesting thing is the fact that now Cortana is available for PC or Windows RT as well. And Cortana will also be a universal app. Unfortunately, Hey Cortana is not available as of now for this device because this only features a dual core processor and Cortana is pretty unstable in this particular build but that's to be expected because this is not even a proper developer preview it's just a technical preview and the build one and there are a certain list of apps that are actually universal just like the settings the people the alarm is universal as well you have the same type of alarm in your phone in the RT and in the PC as well and this is the best part, you get timer, volt clock, stopwatch features as well. Okay, I know that Android has had this for a long time and didn't need external apps, but it's a good thing that Windows has it as well. So thumbs up to Microsoft for that. The Photos app has also been revamped and slightly improved, I would say. This app is universal as well. Meaning that this is actually present in the Windows PC and Windows RT as well. Okay, I'll do that. And you have the calculator as well. A calculator has a completely re revamped interface this time and looks pretty amazing. Oops. And I've noticed that only the UI takes quite a lot of time to load and appear. The apps are pretty snappy. Let me open the calculator app. Okay. See, that was pretty good. That was a pretty quick response time, if you'd ask me. So this is a completely revamped calculator app. I find it to be extremely wonderful. And there's also one interesting point that's worth noting. There is a hamburger menu instead of the triple dot style menu, which was earlier present at the bottom of the Windows Phone devices. So this one uses a card layout interface, I suppose, and it's pretty neat. I think I'll show you the same hamburger menu in the Photos app as well so that you can get a sense of how consistent Microsoft is trying to actually implement all these features. As you can see the hamburger styles icon over here is on it and the card style layout of menu console. So that, that's really neat. Okay, let me show you the albums as well, since we're here. So albums are coming soon. I suppose that this will be available in the next build. Okay, Microsoft is doing some great work, nice. Let me click on the menu as well. And you can see that you can send feedbacks. That is pretty awesome. You want something, you just send a feedback and maybe it might be available in the next build. So that, that's pretty good, I would say. There are some additional options in the settings tab as well. For example, the extras. 
this is a completely again redesigned interface i hope it's visible to you um maybe now okay great so as you can see the nokia account the touch the audio all these features or all these settings are already present in the windows 8.1 but the fact that they've actually categorized them into the extras is pretty helpful and if you've used the windows 8.1 you'll know what i'm talking about You also have the ability to actually add maps right from the settings as well. Okay. So what Microsoft has done is it's basically taken all these Microsoft or Nokia oriented apps and just pushed them right into the settings so that you can have all of them at a single place. And I guess maybe as the Microsoft and Nokia apps get added, they might automatically be added into the settings as well this is just a wild guess maybe it might happen it might not a couple of things that stay stagnant are the multitasking count so far I've only been able to open around eight tabs so that needs a revamp re soon. so that needs to be updated by Microsoft because we have a plenty amount of RAM around two gigs and that's just sleeping within the device that needs to be activated. And 8 apps is pretty minimal if you'd ask me. And there's also one amazing app which I'd like to talk about that's the universal feedback. You can send a generalized feedback or requesting certain features through this app and that's actually pretty nice of Microsoft to do that. And voice typing is actually now present everywhere. This is a feature we've all been wanting for such a long time. I would first demonstrate it with the messaging app and the voice typing has actually undergone a revampment as well. And there are some pretty cool features like continuous voice typing. Initially it used a particular amount of time to break in but now it's just continuous voice typing for example. Hey Microsoft! That's an amazing thing that you've done with this build. I'm, I'm very pleased to say that... See, that's pretty amazing. Great! It picks up this as well. Free pizzas for everybody! So that's it about the messaging app. I'd like to show you this voice typing elsewhere as well, for example in the search. See? I can now search using voice typing. Great! Great. I think I'll need to calibrate my voice a little better. Anywho. Let me just quickly open up WhatsApp to show you that voice typing is present there as well. Because that's something we've all been wanting for a long time now. And please forgive me for the fact that I'm actually tilting and playing around with the device. Because I'm recording and demonstrating this at the same time so uh, it takes a little practice to get things right. Okay, so that's voice typing over here as well. See? It picks it up. That's great. That's it for the demo. And the keyboard has undergone some improvements as well. As you can see, it is slightly better organized, I would say. And this button is just amazing. Do you see the dot over here? You can use it to actually navigate between the different versions of the text. Initially, you had to use your thumb or press hard. I still don't get that one most of the time, so this is actually pretty useful for me. This dot thingy. Nice. And we have a new sound recorder app on board this time, so you don't have to rush this chore to get a new one. This has a very, very simple interface. Kind of like reminds me of the iPhone, I must say. This interface is amazing, I love it. Windows, you've done a great job. 
and I know that I'm repeating this around 100 times, but it's great. Thank you, Microsoft. Let's play it back. I hope they use the rich recording as well. Yes. So not much of an ambient noise. I think it's using the rich recording as well. That's nice. That's it about the sound recorder. Let's move on to the file explorer. Microsoft has provided an in-house file explorer instead of the new file app that you had to download from the store earlier. So this has the hamburger style menu as well. And again, you can see a very consistent styling that Microsoft has adopted this time to make you familiarize with interfaces. So that's amazing. Recent this device. It's kind of like the Windows PC, I would say. Nice. You still have the three dot interface over here. Hopefully this should be removed in the next build. But I can't comment on that until I actually see it myself. So that pretty much sums up the Windows 10 technical preview build one. And I think I will cover almost all the features that have been added. If I missed anything, please do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to cover that for you. And so far, so good. I'm very amazed with this Windows 10 technical preview since it's just a built one. And although it's not rock stable, I would say it's definitely good and it's definitely looking good for the future. Hopefully you'll be seeing tons of features like USB OTG and a full-fledged Microsoft Office support in the near future. And we hope that the build 2 is pretty stable compared to the build 1. And of course, with tons of added features. So that's pretty much it. This has been an extensive review about the Windows 10 technical preview. Okay, so if you really like this video, please do give us a like and subscribe down below. That really, really helps. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.